All right, guys, we're down to the final couple lines of code that we need to be able to actually add items to our um, UI table view. Now, if you remember where we left off in the second part of this tutorial was we added um, essentially an add uh, button uh, to our UI navigation controller. We tied that to a new method that we created called insert new object. This displayed a UI alert view. Of course, that alert view doesn't do anything because we don't really look for um, text the user has heard, and we haven't added any code that will actually do the insertion into our particular array and our table view. So let's go ahead and implement just that. Now, if you remember, in our last video, we had also implemented some code that said that our class, which is view controller, would conform to the UI alert view delegate protocol. And here's where we're going to make use of that. So jump over to your view controller's header file, put your cursor over UI alert view delegate, the text, and that will open up within the quick help. And again, if you don't see this, uh, make sure you've got your utilities view enabled. And within that, click on the link for the UI alert view delegate protocol reference. Once that opens up in Organizer, scroll down and there should be a method called alert view clicked button at index. So we're responding to an action here. So this is the method that we want to implement. So click on it and we will copy the signature itself. So command C to copy that. Let's jump back to our view controllers implementation file. And I'm just going to scroll down towards the bottom and add a new pragma mark just so it's easier for me to read my code. And I will call this one uh, UI alert view delegate methods. And really we're just going to implement the one method here <coughs> and add some code to it. Okay, now remember that within, if we were to run our application at this time, in fact, let's bring it up in our simulator, it's still running. If I click this plus button, I actually get a text field where the user, where I can enter some text. And that the idea here, of course, would be this is the text that would get added to our table view. But we've got two buttons, one's called cancel and the other one's called OK. Now, we only want to perform the action of inserting it into the table view if the user types the text in and hits OK. If they hit cancel, we actually want to ignore it. So keeping that in mind, we also need to know what the index of our buttons are. So in general, when you're working with a UI alert view, there is, if you look at the reference itself, and I'm not going to go out and look at it uh, just a second. In this example, I know that, for example, the uh, cancel button has index 0 and the OK button has index 1. And you can take a look at the UI alert view reference um, or the delegate reference and you should be able to see uh, some information about if you add more buttons, how does that work and you know what do the numbers go up to. But in this example, let's just uh, take it for the fact that the cancel button is going, because it's the first one, it's going to have index of 0. This one is going to be 1. Okay, so I am going to stop running my application and come down here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say only perform do the following actions if the user hit the OK button. So the way I would do that is I'd say if and the condition I would give is button index and remember that's one of the parameters that we get passed in. I'll say if button index is equal to one, which is the OK button, then perform this particular code. Next, what I want to do is remember, first step we're going to do is we're going to insert the value that the user typed in into our array. So the way we could do that is we will do something like, we'll say we'll create an NS string object, and I'm going to call this, let's call it temp text field. And we are going to set it to the alert view, which is the parameter that is passed into us. And we're going to say it's the text field at index. And it's going to ask you, what's the index of the text field? It will be, in this case, 0. And we're going to grab its text property, which will be an NS string, and set it to our um, NS string variable called temp text field. Next, what we want to do 
is we are going to try and insert that particular NS string value into our NS mutable array. But before we do that, we probably want to make sure that that was declared. It's just kind of a best practice item. So we're going to say if numbers or if not numbers, then declare some memory for our numbers array. So we're just going to say NS mutable array alloc in it. So really the only thing we're doing here, this is kind of a best practice item. We're just saying we don't want to be trying to insert uh, an NS string object into an NS mutable array that doesn't exist. So this is kind of that double check to say if it doesn't exist, go ahead and create it and then we'll go ahead and do the, the insertion into it. So let's now actually do the insertion portion. So we'll say we'll call on numbers, which is our NS mutable array, remember. We're going to call this method called insert objects at or, or rather let's see here we want insert object at index and what do we want to insert as the object we want to insert temp text field at integer at index zero so here's a little tip about ns mutable arrays now you may be wondering when we're doing this insertion why we don't do it at the end it's because of the way ns mutable arrays work um, they work within when you declare an ns mutable array you've got a set of values that you usually set um, set that up with and when you try to insert a new value you almost always have to do it at the top and then what will happen is the ns mutable array will will shift every single index that's already in the array down one value if you try to insert it for example by maybe getting back a count of the number of items in your array and then try to insert it so for example in our example we've got five ns string objects initially in the array we try and get a count of that, no it's five, and we try to insert it at number six, you'll get an array out of bounds um, error. So just for now, understand that you're going to need to insert this object at index zero, which is going to be sort of at the top. And once that's done, we then need to add it to our table view. So the way we would do that is we would say we'd create an index path object. So an NS index path, we'll just go ahead and call it index path. And we will say ns index path, index path for row. This is the function we want. And we will pass in 0 and 0 for both of these. So again, like I said, we're inserting it at the top. Then we add this to our table view. So we say something like self dot my table view, which is the name of our table view object. And we'll say insert rows at index paths. And it takes two parameters. One is um, uh, the N NS array, which is basically the index path. So again, we're going to do something like this. And this may look familiar. We did this earlier. And then with row animation, we're going to give it the value of UI table view row animation automatic. Close this up. Semicolon to finish. Command S to save. And it looks like we have one error somewhere. Nope, we don't. We're good. So let's do a command R to run. And we should see that we've got our project well set up at this point. We've got an initial uh, table view with five NS string objects in it. One, two, three, four, five. I can then go ahead and click this particular button. I get a UI alert view. I can type in, for example, an, an NS string called six. Hit OK. And that gets added to my table view. I can try it again. This time I'm going to type in 7 and I'm going to hit cancel and nothing gets added. I can now edit it and delete the option that we just added 6, hit done, and there we go. We now have a UI table view that is editable. We've also made use in this example of UI alert views and learned how we can grab the value that the user uh, enters into a UI alert view and then use that within any portion of our code. So that's it for our example. Uh, I hope this video was helpful to you. I do understand that this ended up being a rather long tutorial. Hope all of you were following along with the different pieces of the tutorial. And thanks for watching.